Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to join this uh, webinar uh, organized uh, in the context of the European Toolkit for Schools. And uh, today we'll be talking on the topic of preventing gender violence in schools. Um, this fits into the overall uh, context of the toolkit, which is uh, a repository of resources on inclusive education and uh, tackling early school leaving. So um, we want to bring forward uh, inspiring act, um, practices and examples of how more inclusive uh, schools can be developed. And um, this evening, we have uh, the honor to have two very uh, good speakers with us. So um, they will uh, talk about how this um, prevention of gender violence in schools can take place uh, in, in practical ways and uh, how, how schools can address this uh, quite uh, sensitive issue. So uh, first we will hear from Dr. Anna Vidu. Uh, she is a postdoctoral uh, fellowship in the Department of Sociology at the University of California, Berkeley at the moment. And um, uh, she is also the coordinator of Research Network on Women's and Gender Studies and the co-founder of Sol Solidarity Network of Victims of Gender Violence in Universities. Um, our second speaker is Marie-Louise Petersen. Uh, she is a, a teacher in Denmark and uh, she has a degree in Gender Studies. She's been an e-twinning ambassador uh, since 2014, and for many years she has also um, steered a specific e-twinning group on gender and sexuality issues uh, in the e-twinning community. So um, to know about this topic, you are in very good hands uh, this afternoon. The topic is about and and. Uh, find also some uh, ways to develop the topic uh, at the school level. So I will give the floor now to Anna. Uh, please um, feel free to, to start. Thank you. Great, thank you so much for the presentation and uh, good evening everyone. So um, today in in the in the part of the presentation I'm going to share with you, I will focus on on these four um, ideas, no? like main ideas, um, on how to um, to prevent uh, gender violence uh, in schools. Right. So I will begin by explaining a little bit the existence of the gender violence uh, in in schools and also the need for for intervention, right? For what is now as as uh, being an upstander, right? And then uh, I will I will focus on the um, concept of isolating gender violence, so the protection of who's who intervene to support um, victims and um, uh, to prevent attacks. Also, um, how is important to address uh, the isolating gender violence in order to prevent the gender-based violence. And finally, I will focus on an example, no? on the um, uh, zero violence uh, Braves Club as a way to empower schools and communities. So um, as we all know and, and read, and also the research um, has agreed that at an international level, there is a presence of violence in society as, as a whole, right? So more, Mm, than 120 million girls worldwide have been forced uh, to some sexual acts at some point in their lives, no? according to the data we have. Um, at least one in five girls reported one incident of sexual violence um, that first occurred between the ages of 10 and 14. So um, also regarding the world report on violence against children, uh, schools are not considering to be safe spaces um, for 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 children right so taking part on 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 violence um, in in the everyday life so um, there is a significant proportion of um, of, of 
of gender violence occurring, um, as we were saying, in different um, in different uh, spaces. So um, the data is very significant on how um, difficult uh, the situation is, on how uh, important it is to intervene in order to address uh, this reality. So, um, in, more specifically, in the school context, we also have uh, data um, regarding the cyberbullying and um, the risk that this uh, is um, that this situation is involving for um, for children. Right? For instance, we have some data on how 55% of victims admit falling um, into depression after suffering. Um, harassment of bullying at schools, 35% um, of, of, the, of them were self-mutilated and 38% of people on this research thought or have tried to commit suicide. No? So we have uh, very um, strong consequences no, on, on, on the fact of, of being victims of violence. So therefore it's so important to have um, effective solutions and evidence-based um, uh, uh, activities to, um, to, um, to, take, uh, to take into, into account, right, and to apply in school. So we also have the, uh, as a framework, right, the Istanbul Convention approved by the Council of Europe, which specified the, the different types of violence, which are the, the following, no, have a big list here. But I would like to say um, at this point that we already have uh, taken um, protocols or incorporating in schools mechanisms um, and laws and actions no, to, um, to progress and, and uh, to tackle uh, this, these types of violence, but we still needed to respond to the situation that many victims are still isolated. No, many people are still um, not uh, not there to uh, to speak about their situation and to break the silence. No, so what research said regarding this? Um, there is a need to support uh, survivors of violence, right? Um, but also there is a need to protect that support, right? So. Um, we know from research that bystander intervention is one of the most effective mechanisms to prevent and protect survivors and um, gender violence as a problem. So therefore, we need to create alliances and uh, to create these networks of support, which sometimes are, um, are informal networks, but also help to um, address and to be very effective uh, sometimes even more effective than the formal ones, right? So, um, as the bystander intervention mechanisms uh, uh, say, you no, know, we have to take a stand, you no, know, to to speak up, to to take action, and uh, don't be just a bystander. So, don't be just someone who is witnessing, who is um, listening, or 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 even looking at the situation, but to be somebody who intervenes, so to be an upstander, no? so to be an active bystander, no? to directly intervene, take taking a, a, an action, distract or delegate. So um, we know how to do it in 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 a, in a theoretical way. So uh, we have uh, different um, mechanisms and different. Um, uh, practical information, so no one has to do everything, but everyone can do something. No, That's the main idea. So we know that uh, also the research is saying that um, in the academic environments, um, the, these formal mechanisms are not enough, right? So we need more, we need to go further, and we need to have community norms, to have the community involved, to have people feeling part of the norms in order to to achieve a real change, right? So um, what's the big question here? Even if we know how to do it, how to intervene, what to do, in which way we should take a stand, how to support the survivor, people mm, not always do it, right? So um, why those in a position no, to support survivor, uh, they they have doubts no, about interviewing or not interviewing. So we have, we took mm, further, mm, uh, steps in this sense, even the European Commission 
approved uh, a, a protection of who's who um, there to um, to speak about uh, about uh, normatives that are not that are not uh, being um, uh, implemented in the European Commission. So this is not about gender violence, but this is important because it's it's a framework we have in order to also implement no further uh, mechanisms on how to protect who's who mm, dare to protect the victims, no defend who's who defends, right? So here we are. We have the concept of. Mm, isolating gender violence because when there are no mechanisms to protect the people who defend the victims um, these may suffer from gender from isolating gender violence meaning attacks and reprisals leaving the direct victims isolated and without support right so therefore it's important to consider the idea of isolating gender violence um, meaning any kind of violence against who advocate for gender violence victims um, the objective of such violence is um, to isolate, um, isolate gender violence victims, but also to discourage reporting or receiving support in order to maintain the impunity of gender violence. So it's it's both, right? It's to attack who's who uh, support survivors, but also to keep the direct victims um isolated right so um this this concept was um was um, implemented for the first time um as a the idea of second order uh, sexual harassment maybe some of you have heard about that but um, during the last 26 years it has no uh, impact on that concept right so therefore uh, it was a need to go from the second order sexual harassment to the isolating gender violence, which is the biggest concept, including um, what is really happening, right? More than just some cases of sexual harassment, no, but in introducing um, uh, different types of uh, gender violence. So um, also addressing this violence occurring to uh, both uh, people, um, as I'm saying, no, both. Um, 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 figures right so who's who intervene and who's who are suffering from direct victims so mm, from from that moment on from the moment when isolating gender violence was created as a concept we have a uh, different uh, research study um going deeper on what is really happening no for instance in violence against women uh, ramon fletcher published an article on different um cases when um, the isolating gender violence may happen, for instance, in schools um, or maybe in the family when someone dares to speak about um, an harassment occur to a minor, for instance, or maybe in, um, in, in the press context or the political party. So in different spaces in society, this situation may happen. So therefore, it's important to have research on, on this um, reality. So this other research, fear to retaliation, um, um, showed for the first time uh, data, no, quantitative data on why people do not intervene helping survivors. And 40% of the population say they do not help for fear of reprisals, right? And 64% place the same reason to explain why others do not help. So this is important to consider that um, there is a fear of attacks and reprisals if interviewing in uh, supporting survivors. Therefore, to support is so important. So we also uh, have um, um, legislation regarding the isolating gender violence. And I just briefly want to mention um, the, the first legislation um, um, considered in the in the European um, in an European context, it was the Catalan Parliament, which approved no, the modification of the article on, on gender-based violence and addressing different forms of sexist violence, incorporating the concept of second order violence, which is the same, right? Isolating gender violence with this name. And um, it was an historical achievement in overcoming uh, second order violence and isolating gender violence, right? Because if we have law, then it's important to have also uh, mechanisms and concrete practices, right? So I will just say that from that moment, different actions started to begin and different associations starting to implement um, and to introduce the concept 
of um, the importance of defending who could defend in their protocols and normatives. No? And also different universities in their quality plans and um, there are also public hearings um, being conducting in different um, in different political um, uh, parties um, in order to address uh, this concept in other countries. So what we need in order to have more people daring to stand up for victims of, of gender violence is to defend the victims, to support the defense of the victims and to stand up in their own context. No? Also creating an environment of zero tolerance. And this is what I'm going to explain to you in, um, in, the, in the time um, I, I have. Uh, now, right? So um, we have an example of the Braves Club, the zero violence from the age zero, which was an action already um, introduced in the in the European Toolkit for Schools and also um, um, uh, in the um, and also it is introduced uh, in different schools. So it is an action already. Um, being uh, implemented and already uh, going on uh, and uh, having uh, successful mm, um, results at different uh, points in, in academical schools and also um, uh, in uh, scientific publications, right? So um, how is this by standard intervention model implemented in schools, right? So um, we have the... Um, we have the uh, dialogic model of conflict prevention. I will I will go deeper on that um, later. So uh, since uh, since the, the the Braves Club started in two, 2014, it has made progress in eradicating uh, school violence in both both uh, primary and secondary schools. And it's a strategy uh, to implement effective evidence. Um, evidence-informed practices on preventing violence and gender-based violence. So uh, the, the, the principles of, of this action include um, avoiding the, the normalization of violence. So sometimes in school it's kind of normal, you know, some, some behaviors that may be aggressive. Um, understanding the principle of no means no, no, so this is important to to be to be tackled through different actions um, conducted in schools. Also, to create this solidarity among students. No, as as I was saying, this informal mechanism and this uh, friendship. No, they they used to call it um, to do the shield. No, to to protect. Um, who's, uh, who are uh, suffering from an attack or from a uh, violent uh, behavior. So who's who defend the victims are the brave one. No? That's uh, the idea and become, belong to the brave club. So um, also this is important because it's a way to reverse you know, this uh, widely accepted idea that the ones who perpetrate uh, violence are the brave ones, right? So, and there is also an, an, an aspect here uh, regarding what is attractive in school, right? What, what is cool? What is great? What is um, uh, like, uh, yeah, like fancy function uh, to, to, to have in school? And this is like making a violent behavior um, unattractive. Right, so that's also important not to have the by, bad guys unpopular, right? And this is also a way of reversing the, the widely accepted idea in this sense. So, um, um, looking at how to implement uh, this no, brace, uh, club in, in, in schools, we have different uh, successful actions. Um, these successful actions uh, were part of um, an uh, an European uh, project um, called uh, Included, which uh, was um, a big project uh, conducting uh, in Europe, a framework, an European framework project of research and also the only project of social sciences considered as a best um, pra practice, a best project um, with uh, social impact in, in Europe, right? So um, it is based, as I mentioned before, in the mo dialogic model of violence prevention, which is uh, widely supported by research and also by action and practices in 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 school, right? So um, it 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 involves 
uh, the community in deciding the norms. Um, it, it has an implication on, on how schools may organize their, their daily activities. No, there are mixed uh, committees and also this idea of achieving zero violence from uh, year zero, no, from the beginning. So um, there is more attention and protection to victims and zero attention to, uh, to bullies, to their, um, the people uh, doing uh, like um, um, uh, aggressive uh, behaviors. Right. Um, so the dialogic module model of, of prevention, violence prevention, is a way of, of um, having an, an agreement, right, um, about the school norm. So um, it, it's a very, you know, like a very big uh, organization of the school, but they have um, these uh, norms as, as an important basis. Um, they debate everything. They have general assemblies. You know, they have delegates to explain uh, to all the community, the support of mixed community. So the all community is involved. There is a full commitment of everyone's with the norm agree. So in also the open process to support and um, also training uh, for, um, for, uh, for, for everyone in the school, right? And this, everything is evidence-based, right? And also published in different, um, in different uh, articles, right? So here we have the Zero Violence uh, Brave Club uh, ready, um, uh, published in 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 research uh, in research uh, projects and articles, and um, uh, in the Violence Zero Project from Zero Age. So both boys and girls learn from the beginning and for their entire lives that no one has the right to pressure them by the restricted their freedom and less so in matters such as as intimate as as their body contact right so they really mm, uh, address such important uh, contexts in school no so um everybody is part of the of the zero violence braves club and this uh, was already supported by uh, by previous research results um, working on 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 diversity on uh, people's diversities in school no such as this uh, research we have here and uh, they were saying that um, usually no there were uh, these diverse um, diverse students they were excluded no and they were also um, suffering more harassment and attacks than than others so this is a way of um, of including everyone and uh, also preventing this exclusionary um, uh, behaviors that we previously know that they were happening in schools. So breaking the silence is an important principle and also in working the friendship um, uh, principle because friendship excludes violence. So um, um, no, so uh, the idea of who loves me will treat me well. So they work on this and they 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 learn this and they may make this part of their own uh, discourse, right? So there is an, another important aspect to be mentioned here just quickly, which is the language of um, desire, no? So everything is based on um, how we language, how we express what is going on in school, how this is coherent with um, schools' behaviors and schools' uh, environment. So uh, the language of, of um, ethics, meaning, oh, this is good or this is bad, it's not working anymore. It's, um, it's, it, is, it has to be substituted by the language of desire, no? meaning this is attractive, the good guy is attractive, the good behavior is attractive here, is popular here, so this is what we really have to uh, conduct, right? So the goals of the Zero Violence Breaks Club is to provide students with defensive models free from violence, to encourage all students uh, the freedom to decide and that their decisions are respected, no? Uh, no means no. And this important um, aspect to support the victims so that they feel protected when, when they report an assault. So to, to show this, no? that if you report it, you will be protected. Um, and this is also a very powerful idea, actually, and to break 
uh, with the law of silence. No, you know, the law of silence is something that some everybody know that it's happening, but nobody there to to intervene to break it. No, because it's so strong that it's supposed to become a law. No, so and um, to change no the stigma of the snitch of someone who is telling that uh, others are um, uh, not uh, getting uh, um, attention. So yeah, this is a little bit um, uh, what we were saying. I'm going to the end uh, now just to, to show that this concept um, had very uh, re very good results no, on um, incrementing complaints uh, against uh, different aggressions, also incrementing the empowerment among um, equals, among peers as agents of change, and also um, uh, really advocating for a healthy relationship, uh, relationships and um, uh, reducing the, the feeling of, of uh, isolation among victims, right? So, um, yeah, we have here some steps on how to create it and also some um, voices no, of students uh, saying how it's important for them to, um, uh, to tell to others. No? Here we have a rapper, 10 year old, he's saying, uh, I tell you this because you are my cousin and I don't like you to behave like that. No? And I, I tell you this because I like you, right? So it's a way of really transforming um, the educational environment and um, becoming it uh, even 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 uh, uh, better and with a, a better environment and therefore a better uh, um, student achievement. And uh, finally, we have the this professor of the school also recognizing um, how the environment uh, changing in that school, how changing the, also the visibility of of who's who were. Uh, the bad guys and and uh, no no there are more empowerment of the good ones and um, also um, yeah like the bully accepts criticism and isolation so uh, it hurts and it may change their behavior so yeah so finally we have um, uh, here a girl saying I don't want to have someone near me who treats me badly on happy days so this is also an empowerment of saying what you really want and um, what they what they really want to which relationships they they want to have in school and therefore of course in their uh, in their lives later on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. It was very uh, empowering uh, presentation uh, with a concrete example how these uh, difficult uh, difficult uh, questions can be dealt dealt with. So um, I think we will move on directly to the next presentation of, of um, Marie Louise. Um, we are now on slide 42 because there was a bit of um, concern about the right number of the slide. So Marie Louise, please feel free to take the control yeah, and okay. uh, then you will uh, continue the presentation from here. Please, everybody, feel free to post questions or comments in the chat. So we will take them uh, at the end of the second presentation for both presentations. OK, um, all right. Thank you, Elina. Um, it was interesting to hear your, your talk, uh, Anna. So now I'll continue. Um, and as, as you know, I'm a teacher in Denmark and, um, and um, also an uh, e-training ambassador. Um, and I have moder moderated this group on e uh, that I call Gender Know How to Stop Stereotypes, where the idea is that teachers, educators can share links on uh, gender issues and, and sexuality issues. And there, there's also the possibility to make some polls. Um, and as you can see here, some of the teachers in, have experienced sexist comments, uh, either from students or from students and teachers. Um, and it was just to give you, uh, how do I do the slide here? Yeah. Um, and I also had a question about LGBTI students, uh, if people have policies at their schools. Um, and um, only one <laughs> had, has actually, and it's not me, not, not at my school. We, we, uh, but um, 
as and you can see some of all that is too much of a taboo. So it's really different from from country to country. And I, I can imagine you uh, participants. Uh, I can see that you're also from different countries, and you probably have uh, different. Um, Uh, things to take in consideration when dealing with gender violence and these issues because they are um, a bit delicate and we are very much into a private sphere uh, of um, of also of the body. Um, yeah. Um, I also took uh, 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 because we have the 25th of November, and in some countries, there's a, uh, I don't know in your country, um, there's a focus on this uh, to to stop violence against women, and with the campaign also in the EU and uh, uh, for having this um, to to stop uh, violence against women. And I, it's interesting to see that quite a few said that they had, um, especially on the 25th of November, they did something at their school uh, regarding teaching violence against uh, women. Gen um, yeah. Um, very shortly, I and through the gender uh, uh, this um, group, I have the possibility to invite guest speakers. So throughout for the last four years, as you can see on the slide, I had different topics. Um, I, so um, on all things like gender and uh, neutral pedagog pedagogy in Sweden or LGBTI inclusion um, and also on sexuality education um, and some a few in French. Um, and as you can see, I had uh, how to prevent and tackle sexism in school uh, with Kat Banya from UK Feminist and that I'll just mention a little bit in a moment from, from there. Um, yeah, and also uh, I think some interesting French uh, research and, and, and work about mixing genders because of there's so much gender segregation uh, in, in, in schools. Um, yeah, so um, to prevent gender-based violence in school, the knowledge, um, whole school approach, sexuality education, rethinking the public spaces in school, and having conversations on masculinities and non-criticism. And then also to work with it in integrated in the subject, like in small projects or in camp school campaigns or having guest speakers. Um, I'm not going to speak of all of these, but um, I'll, may, I'll, I'll get into some of some of it. Um, I had um, the, the possibility to invite Kate Banyard um, to a, a, something called Talk Town in Copenhagen. Um, and and uh, and it and so different people uh, attended the workshop on how to tackle sexism in school based on on their materials. And I, it was interesting for me to hear that that some people could say, well, they had experienced something in when they went to school, uh, things that they they would consider sexist, but at the time they didn't think of it that way. And I think that's interesting that we now have a language to speak about these things also with the, the Me Too. Um, so to have documentation to like also that Anna showed in her presentation, um, these are just pictures from different reports from France, from um, uh, the, the UK feminist, and also this thing where it says sex chicane with Lewa i hotel or restaurant and that's from vocational school. That was the first place I think where there was a big survey And one in fifth, so that goes on well together with the other statistics. One in fifth student had experienced some kind of harassment or uh, from from peers in in the vocational school. And I also want to mention um, a Danish uh, book that was um, written by a high school student. Uh, and this was between the two Me Too waves in Denmark. We had a first wave, like everyone had in 2000, was it 17? I think. And then we had a big, the really, uh, not not much happened in Denmark at that time. Um, and then we had the real big way with a lot of consequences in 2020. Um, and uh, but this, so the book is in between, and, and it describes some very uh, sexist rights combined with alcohol in the high schools, and and these rights are are now stopped. Um, so. Um, 
uh, UK feminists, they were together with the teacher union in, in Britain, they made this uh, report, uh, research on sexism. And the, as the title says, it's just everywhere. <laughs> so um, that was the conclusion. And I'm just showing you a, a few, uh, it says here from the teachers who um, uh, had a, have quite frequently had uh, heard some sexist language use either on a daily basis or, 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 uh, or on a thirdly, but it, it was only 17 who never heard him. And the same goes with students who experience, as you can see, harassment. Um, and, um, and teachers also witnessing some kind of um, harassment uh, at, at the school. Um, this report is a public one, so you can easily find it if you're interested in, in seeing the more of the figures. But it, it really made a solid documentation that there is a lot of uh, sexism and sexual harassment going on in the secondary schools. Um, and so the UK feminists have made a lot of resources, um, and both for the teachers um, and for, for students, to empower students, and also for parents. And for parents, that could be, for example, to have a template to, to write to the school, okay, is my sc children's school to take being aware of sexism or are they doing something to prevent this? So they, they have uh, the different uh, um, people um, in consideration. And, and also when it comes to UK feminists, they have the, the whole school approach. Um, and, and uh, I won't read all of this, but it's just to, again, the whole school approach was, where I have underlined at the institutional framework with the policies to have this ex explicit uh, mentioning of, of sexism and harassment. And there's this thing of, of building up uh, capacity. So knowledge and skills and tools so that teachers know how to intervene or, or how to help other students intervene. Um, and and also the thing with empowering the students, um, so they they dare uh, report sexism, and and then again, which all has already been mentioned, the zero tolerance. So I'll I'll just go through that. Um, I think this film, if you don't know this film, I would definitely recommend you. I came across the film because I uh, I'm in contact with an organization called Out Outspoken. Um, and it's, it's only nine minutes, but there's this girl, Amina, who's testifying when she began secondary school, that she had really looked forward to begin, that from almost day one, she experienced some kind of harassment, first in the language and then later on in actually touching. And she describes an incident where a boy pushes her to, to the floor. Um, and, and now I read the quotes. Uh, she says, I know people saw, but no one said anything. They looked, and then they kind of looked away. They pretended it didn't happen. And then later on, she says, she doesn't tell her parents because I was scared that I would be blamed. And at some other point in, in, the, in, the, in the film, she says, I would stick up for someone. So for people not doing that for me was really hard. And I think that goes very well with, uh, together with what Anna spoke about with the intervenes <clears throat> by bystanders. Um, I think uh, conversations on masculinities are also interesting to, uh, um, to, to get into this. Um, and there are more and more organizations who, um, who put focus on this. And there is one in England called uh, Beyond Equality and they do also, like UK Feminista, they do these workshops for universities and also for schools where um, they have facilitators coming out and having conversations with, with boys or, or young men on, on, um, on, the, on, the, on, on gender role, on this masculinity, on, on violence. And they're very careful about not, as they say, they don't, it's not about fixing the boys, but it's about a conversation and listening and bringing attention to difficult uh, issues. And they have this five, uh, five things that men and boys can do to prevent. And one of them is speak up and speak out. Um, and there, yeah. The other links are, there is really a momentum right now in Britain after the murder of Sarah Everett uh, in London in March, who was killed by, murdered by a 
kidnapped and murdered by a police officer. So there's really a big momentum. Um, and and I uh, and Scotland and I don't know if it's called, but the Scottish police they have also made um, some in, an interesting side on where uh, uh, say, um, masculinities and and violence is is discussed with many different small films. Um, and it's also from one of these organizations that I have uh, come across the this thing gender violence as a continuum. So with the language. And in one end with the jokes and and then teasing and and sex and then the sexist language and then what what the what the thing about catcalling sort of the whistling or of of uh, typically girls and then harassment and then rape and then at the very sort of uh, end of the the continuum of actual murder and this uh, model can also I've seen it pictured as as a pyramid. I just made the arrow because it w was what I saw in my, uh, but I, I read about it in, in the white ribbon in the um, homepage. Um, I attended a, 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 a couple of day, a weeks ago, I attended, um, a, it was for free, um, a, in, a, a webinar in, in, uh, by with interview with people from this organization. And these are some quotes that students are more attentive than two and three years ago, they experienced that. And the fact that nobody is not, is denying the existence of gender-based violence, apparently some were before. And there's this ma male allyship, was she coded before, was said, oh, it's really nice that there's this uh, bonding. And they also said that parents can be an important ally. And, and uh, then this thing, we speak the word we create. Um, and I think also this conversation about being a man, so boys can do better by women and girls non-binary folk, like um, uh, people with other gender identities um, and and then each other. I think that's a good uh, good way of putting it. Then I want you to, to uh, uh, turn attention to Sweden because they have, there's a school, uh, well, many schools who have been working with gender. And there was one where, again with the zero tolerance. And this was to, uh, to playful fighting. So even this thing, oh, a little bit of just teasing around, fooling around in the corridor. Was, uh, they found out that this was it, intimidating for other students. And they also had their school problems with many of the boys not doing well in their grades. And when they applied this norm critical approach and also with the, so having questionings to the norms in the school, should all boys always make a lot of noise or is this, is this a norm? And then looking at it in a critical way, um, then they also came up with this absolute zero tolerance to playful fighting. And, uh, and apparently it also improved, the, not only made it more calm and less intimidating, but also improved the grades and it, it, particularly among the boys. So I think that's very interesting. And there's a link to here where you can read about it in, in English. Um, I always like to uh, to, to uh, cite some of the fr French geographer um, because the public spaces and playgrounds, it's um, often the place of the bullying hotspots where the teachers are not everywhere. And uh, the bullying hotspot is ICLEO, it's an organization who works for LGBTI inclusion. And they, they call it, it's, it's from them I have the word hotspots. And again, as a school institution ask, what are the norms in these areas? Is it a norm that some people sit and shout in the canteen? Is it a, uh, and is this like, so with the sound, they, they dominate the space. Um, does everyone have the right to be uh, at the different places? Or is a certain group and behavior dominating? Um, the French geographer Edith Marie Jules, who also once did a talk on each winning, she says there's a lot of stereotypic behavior and gender segregation in the playgrounds. Uh, her, her observations showed that uh, and research that the boys dominate the center spaces with ball games. And then out in the periphery, uh, the girls uh, and some of the boys, they are sort of squeezed into more sort of um, uh, activities where they don't take up space. So there's even the body learning to not take up space. Um, and another point she um, has that uh, some of her research showed that some of the boys actually wanted to play with girls and they were just afraid that they couldn't do it because they were so afraid how other boys would judge them and that they would get a, a comment, hey, you're, you're a sissy, you're something. 
Um, and so to to look at the um, at a critical look at the public spaces is a is a possibility. And some schools who have uh, worked with this, they have made the playground uh, focus with with ball games with rotating. So maybe one group can have it on Monday, and then on another day another group. Or, and also with having more plants and and semi intimate spaces, so that there's also a nice areas for um, for the people who just want to talk, um, and then also to actually ensure a more equal sharing of spaces, so that everyone feel they can also use the the center space or the the court, and then also uh, to in ensure and encourage more mixed gender activities. Um, yeah. I can see my, I, I will speed up a little. Um, I just want to make a publicity for this um, uh, French uh, website called Matilde, and they have a video context. And if you have students, some of you, uh, you can still, uh, it's still time for to register for this little video contest, uh, Busson contre le sexisme, to go against sexism. I did. I attended this contest with my uh, students, and I have a French class uh, at my former school about three or four years ago. And my 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 students made their own uh, manuscript. It's about you throw like a girl, and just making this film gave a lot of attention and and focus on on, on this matter. And so you hand in the film in March. Um, and these are just some examples from, there are many uh, French, but you can also have do them in, in other languages. Uh, there are films in Spanish, in English, you, and as long as there are some subtitles, I think, in, in French. Um, yeah, and I think it's interesting, they also have, we had this thing about no, and as it says here, they, this is the class, they made, made something about no's not being respected. Um, I want to finish off by um, this uh, a little um, uh, webinar and toolkit that I have used. It's called um, Hacking um, to Hack Hate uh, by Selma. And a Finnish teacher and I, we both attended this. Um, it was a webinar with toolkits. And it was to learn to, uh, about uh, to learn how we teachers can teach uh, how to, uh, about uh, behavior on social media um, and hacking hate. <laughs> and so after we had attended uh, and, and we were introduced the difference toolkit, we created an e-twinning project. And as you can see, um, the Danish students we called we called us the project empathy and social media. So to have focus on the positive thing, empathy. And, uh, and we had the conversations about politeness, social media, and hate speech. And they did, on, as you can see in the picture, they, they did, this is my class sitting, uh, and they're looking at a speech by the Finnish student on hate speech. And we had, uh, we had a focus in our school about homophobia and transphobia. So they did, my students did a PowerPoint about this in connection with hate speech. And as you can see, the focus was also on hacking, uh, hacking hate, and to speak up, uh, maybe on, on social media, to to write a comment, to to show that it's not just the silence and and, and consent. Yes, I think uh, this was um, all from me. Um, so thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marie Louise. So we are at the end of the um, end of the webinar, but we still have some time for questions. I picked up earlier on from the chat a couple of points that Adhanasia uh, wrote. So these were during Anna's presentation, but of course uh, can be relevant for, for both presenters. So first one was um, to have more details on the practice of coward corner and brave corner. So um, yeah, perhaps we can, we can uh, share some some resources on that. And uh, there was also a comment that uh, would it be difficult to have uh, these practices without creating uh, discriminatory f um, factors like uh, bullying the bully. So this was uh, also a comment. Perhaps uh, Anna can um, comment on this.
Yes, so I already start by the second part. So um, I will say, um, I mean, the, about the bullies, no? And the, so, of course, language is important, but it's also important to know uh, which language or which terms we're changing, right? So therefore, it's a way of um, addressing them directly to say this is what we really want to uh, think about and we want to uh, really analyze if, uh, what's happening with this, no? So who is, um, who is um, behaving in which way? And about the, um, about the, the, the corners, no? You were saying the brave, the brave corners. I didn't um, uh, point out so much on this, but the cowards uh, corner versus the brave corner. So um, is that uh, there is a space where um, you can join if you are the brave one, right? So um, if if there is someone uh, interviewing and someone taking um, a, a step supporting the survivors is a brave, it's a braver, right? It's 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 you are from the brave club. This is like something. Um, uh, an attractive uh, group and an attractive name to call uh, brave to someone who is um, interviewing because there is an awareness of how difficult and how hard it is for someone to interview um, considering the attacks and uh, the, the negative consequences they, they, may, they may suffer. So therefore you are brave if you stand up, if you are saying what is happening in class. No? And um, if you are not, no, there is the there is a coward um, um, corner. So yeah, it's it's the opposite, right? So, um, but um, what school supports is the um, the brave one and all the the popular uh, people who are um, interviewing. So yeah, uh, there there are a lot of materials going on. So if you need some um, specific uh, research on this, just uh, let us know. Yeah. Thank you. We've also um, shared some links during the presentations uh, in the chat, so you may find more information there. And the presentations will, of course, be shared uh, online. So there was a um, wealth of uh, ideas and uh, uh, resources presented, which uh, then you can, of course, um, explore further on your own time. For the time being, I haven't seen uh, other questions, but there were a lot of thank you messages, which um, we we all agree with. And these two presentations have been just very amazing, um, and um, showing how also this challenging topic can be addressed in in positive ways. If, if there are no further questions, I think we are then um, ready to close the webinar. But uh, before doing so, I would like to remind that um, next week there is um, another webinar organized by the European Toolkit for Schools. So uh, this is a small series of webinars that we are running right now. Uh, the topic next Friday at the same time at four o'clock in the afternoon, Central European time. Uh, is a systemic whole school approach to mental health and well-being in schools in the European Union. So uh, on mental health and well-being will be the focus uh, next week. We really hope that um, you have joined, uh, you have joined uh, uh, taking part this evening and um, that you can also participate next week. A big thank for the presenters, uh, marie Luis and Anna, it was a pleasure to have you here. Um, the recording and the presentations will be available on the website. I'm finishing the session by just wishing everybody a good evening and a lovely weekend. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting us, and uh, it was interesting to participate uh, in this and to putting focus on the topic. I think that was a very uh, great initiative.